basically, long jeans was actually my worst buy too. Uh, and I did, you know, I was just telling you guys about Rolex. I made the made same mistake with long jeans. I bought it too. Um, that's how I know never buy things. Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of It's About Time. You guys know me, I'm Jared. Um, anyways, I was just catching up on an uh, episode that we did from the beach over July 4th weekend. Uh, our live, one of our live Q&As that we did on Facebook Live. It was the first time we ever did it. And we're up to 1,040 views already on it. So thank you guys all for making that so successful. Thank you guys all for also submitting your questions. Um, anyways, my partner in crime, my colleague, Mr. Drew Pizzullo, is not here with me currently today. A happy Friday to everybody. Um, he is off making the big bucks right now. But um, I wanted to do something that was a little bit different. Um, we're going to be doing an unboxing episode today. So here's what I want everyone to uh, do with me, all right? Take a little walk with me. Normally, we do what's on the wrist first, right? All right, so hold on one second. We're, we're going to do it a little bit a little bit differently today. Anyways, welcome to Casa de Sharp. Um, so, uh, here we go. So now, you know, one of the episodes that I know that we did uh, down the shore was what's on your radar. And I remember that I threw out the Tissot Powermatic 80 Balade, I believe it was. I decided to change it up a little bit and we kind of went a little bit of a different direction. So for our very first official unboxing episode, just a little disclaimer, I do have this wrapped up the way that it kind of came, although I've already opened it, had it resized, took off most of the plastic or all the plastic and really, but I'm going to show you what it would look like, kind of, if you were to open up a watch for the first time. So, say hello to the Mito. We're going to get this open here. Just a second. We're going to flip that over right here. This is the uh, Mito Ocean Star Captain. This is not the... Uh, they have a couple different versions. They have a titanium. And they also have a, uh, um, a steel version. So this can be the steel version. So this one actually came very well packaged. Came with the nice bubble wrap surrounding the beautiful box. This is the standard Mito. They've been making Swiss watches since 1918. How cool is that, right? So nice standard little bit of like, you know, wrapping paper around the box. I've had a few Mitos in the past and this is what it comes with. So it's very, very nice and classy and elegant. So before we even open up the box, of course, we take the uh, little wrapping paper and just kind of put it off to the side. So one of the things that your watches should always come with is a uh, kind of like a, a little booklet that gives you the, you know, how to use kind of guide or whatever it is. This one obviously is a mechanical watch. It's analog. It's not digital. And this is says the user's manual on it. So all of them will have, you know, some information, different languages, and uh, usually it's, uh, you know, few few pages worth of stuff. Usually the first few pages gives you, uh, you know, gives you all different languages, and then it tells you whatever it is, congratulations on purchasing your watch, yada, yada, yada. Um, gives you uh, a whole bunch of stuff about, you know, what to... What to expect when using your watch, how to use it, whatever it is. So that's always helpful to have. And the other thing you should sometimes get with your watch, depends really on where you get it from, is your uh, international warranty card. Two years on just about every watch that I know. This one, I have to admit, is not purchased from an authorized dealer or any dealer for that matter. Um, but it was nice that I still got the card anyways, just to have. Really doesn't make any difference, but... Um, you know, I know watches that are purchased from like jomashop.com or whatever it is, they do not come with the card. Actually, Jomashop, uh, what they usually do, and a lot of other places do this too, they will remove a lot of this. I mean, they'll leave you maybe even like the user manual, but they really remove the warranty card. They already open up their uh, packaging and remove a lot of things before you even get it. So, uh, let's get back into going into the watch itself. Is everyone ready? Here we go. Ta-da! Oh my god, it's so amazing, right? 
So anyways, like I said, this one came very well packaged. came with like a little protective pillow here. This I thought was actually also kind of cool. Um, a lot of owners don't know these things when they get watches, but it says, please note, this is screw down crown. Please do not pull the middle knob out without freeing it by turning counterclockwise. Remember, we've talked about, um, we've talked about screw down crowns in the past. I've seen so many people that come in the store, they don't realize they have a screw down crown. They get moisture into it. Always make sure that your crown is pushed in all the way, or if it's a screw down crown, you rotate it to make sure it's fully pushed into the case. Um, and then of course with all brand new watches with, that you get on eBay or anyone else, although most of them don't come with this kind of packaging, but this one says if you intend to return or exchange, please do not remove any protective plastic or tags, do not wear size or alter the watch in any way. Understandable. So let's start to take this bad boy out like I said, I've already had it sized. Took it down to the mall yesterday. Had a few wings taken out. So this is like the officially unofficial way of the unboxing. So welcome to the Mito Ocean Star, caliber 80. My gosh. So now this one did come with uh, this protective uh, plastic around it, but then it also came with um, uh, plastic around the uh, you know, the band and stuff. So, perdon, while I uh, do this for a second, I'll put the camera right here, hopefully you guys can see me. I'm just taking off this tag, which I actually did put on, uh, back onto the watch, just for like show and tell purposes or whatever. I'm probably messing this up really badly right now. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's see how this one comes. Okay, so this one's actually relatively easy. Now, all your watches, whenever you get them in, they will come usually with, you know, obviously something on it. This one in particular uh, came with the uh, tag on it already, which, you know, is nice, obviously. You never, sometimes it sucks to get watches where you, um, where you get the watch and let's just say it is brand new or whatever it is, uh, but then literally the, uh, the watch itself I mean, like the person who like, uh, you know, does the unboxing, because they always have people at the store, wherever it is that you're getting it from, that, you know, like I said, remove a lot of the things from it. There we go. So I got it. Um, so a lot of times it won't even come with stuff on it, but this one came with the uh, tag. You know, of course, that's the retail price and then all the information on it. I really liked how this one was packaged. Um, Extremely elegant, honestly. Um, really great, uh, really great and protective, and all the plastic on it. You know, you could tell this one was never returned before. Nothing else happened to it. Uh, so this was probably one of the best ones that I've got from eBay that has been packaged that way. Um, so, anyways, without me keep talking, let's get back to the watch itself. Let's bring you back into a little bit of better light here. So this is the Mito Ocean Star Caliber 80, Power 80. It's an 80 hour power reserve with a day date. Of course you have the screw down crown. Crown is signed Mito. And of course you have the crown protector. Um, a few very cool features of this watch. Um, see, first of all, it's, it's brushed and it's not... Uh, it's not polished, which I kind of like. I mean, I don't care whether a watch is brushed or polished, but I'm a big fan of having a uh, brushed watch, especially for divers. Um, this one goes down to uh, 20 bar, 200 meters. Um, on the back, it does say water resistance right there. You guys could see it like right here on the bottom. Let me just see if I can get this a little bit better while, of course, filming too. Um, so it does say water resistant right there. I know my camera kind of blows a little bit. Um, it's got the nice, uh, single scissor deployment clasp easily snaps into place. No problem. Press the buttons on the side and it comes right off. But what's also very cool about this watch is it has an adjustable clasp here. Whereas you push in this pin over here and this pin down here. And this bad boy, literally, you guys can see, that's the micro-adjuster clasp. 
Really true divers watches have it. I love that on this watch. Uh, this one also comes with screw links, which means you need to have a tool. There we go. Uh, tool you want to make sure that you have to uh, take the links out. You know, I wouldn't try this on your own. Uh, you could easily strip the screws. You want to take it. Like I said, I took it down to the mall yesterday. Um, and then, of course, it has the, and I'm going to try to do this with one hand, of course. Um, this has the unidirectional, unidirectional, whatever it is, uh, rotating bezel. You know, dive watch. This is should be standard on all dive watches. If it's not, I would say uh, you probably need to return your watch. Um, but anyways, this is originally, um, I know we've gone over this. Um, this is for, uh, there we go. It's nice and straight now. Not easy to do with one hand, but watches that are good, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to do it with one hand if they're easy to, uh, to free. Um, so anyways, this has a nice, uh, nice, uh, blue bezel on it. Um, and one of the things I wanted to go over, cause I started going over it before, was um, so with the dive bezel, it's used for uh, for divers. So, you know, I guess most of the times divers have like an hour or whatever it is in their oxygen tank. So, um, they will rotate this uh, twelve right here, starting at twelve, all the way to wherever the minute currently hand is before they dive. And then once they get to this warning track, which is fifteen minutes or less. They know that it's time to start to come up or at least start to come to the surface because their tank is getting low. Um, so that's a really cool feature on it. Um, I really love the deep blue. Um, let's see if we can go into a little bit of different light so you guys can see this. The deep blue on it, it's, it's a lot better in person than it is on the camera. Um, but it, it's just like a striking blue. It's really clean. Um, I love the orange tip second hand. The loom on it is pretty cool too. Um, let me, uh, I'll actually show it to you guys um, so you guys can see. We'll take a, like a little walk downstairs. Um, so while this one is charging up a little bit, um, you know, my first impression of the watch was I really liked it. Super, super comfortable on the wrist. Um, you know, I happen to like uh, the fact that, you know, even though it's a 21,600 vibrations per hour, which is a little slower than the 28,800. Sometimes you can't even tell with this one. I mean, it just, the second hand really glides along so smoothly, um, which is really nice. We're going to keep this under the light for just one more minute while I keep talking. Um, so, you know, I really love the adjustable clasp on it. Having the micro clasp is nice. A lot of times you have to take out one of the pins and adjust it with a little tool. But the fact that you could do it without the tool on this watch is really nice. Um, I told Drew... Uh, for the past like few days, like when I got this watch, I was like, I think that this is the best dive. This is my opinion. Anyone could debate me on it or submit a question or even submit something that they think is better. Um, a dive watch with at the five thousand dollar category or less. Um, I think that this is hands down the best one on the market. Um, so many great features, and again, I'm gonna go over literally all the features with you guys again. Um, not necessarily to prove my point, just to show really what this watch has. Anyways, the one minute is coming up. So we're going to take this into a little bit lesser light. Ooh, you guys can already see that. Woohoo! Look at that bad boy go. All right, so this is like pure total darkness. I really don't have it. I mean, minus the camera's blurry. Uh, it looks like it's around 10.42, going to be around 10.43. Really no problem reading the time. Also, have the, I'm covering it and uncovering it. You know, uh, it's one of the things I know Rolex, and especially Breitling has, is that little loom dot at 12 o'clock, uh, so you know where the rotating directional bezel is. But you guys can really see really nice uh, blue loom on it, uh, highly visible. That's another feature that I really love about this watch. Let's get back into, you can see that thing just glowing as we're walking even into the light, as soon as I you know, left it from the lamp, which is pretty cool. So this watch is really, uh, really great. What I'm gonna do for you guys now, let's actually swing back this way for a second. 
Uh, I'm going to put this on my wrist because obviously the question that we were wondering at the beginning of the episode and every episode is what's on the wrist? Of course, what's on the wrist is the Mito Ocean Star Captain Caliber 80 Power Reserve Watch. You know, the nice clasp here. You know, the great part about this watch, um, it does not bang into my wrist at all. This is from uh, <laughs> is from trimming some trees yesterday. But, uh, you know, it, it's so comfortable on the wrist. I mean, it doesn't... It doesn't bang... Like, when I had my Oris and some other watches, like, right down... Well, obviously, I can't. I'm trying to get this, like, my finger in front of the camera so you guys can see it. But, like, right over here on my wrist is where things would bang into it. And my wrist right over here would be getting, like, all red and just, oh, my, it, it would hurt, you know, because I would have the watch wearing it down here. And the crown, you know, bugs into you a little bit. Sorry if the camera just jumped a little bit there. Um, but this watch is very comfortable. It's 42 and a half millimeters. Such a presence on the wrist. Almost reminds me of the uh, uh, Rolex Oyster bracelet of today. Very durable. Really doesn't make a lot of sound at all. It's not like a cheap, flimsy bracelet, which I really happen to enjoy. They call these the H-Links. Um, and again, the easy micro-clasp adjuster, which I have it out on the first setting. This watch is just so pure on my wrist, I have to say. Um, I love the beautiful blue dial. It's absolutely great. Um, and as you guys can see, it really almost looks like, I mean, 21,600 vibrations per hour is usually a little jerky with the second hand. That's really moving along much nicer than I thought it was going to. Um, I can't really report anything in terms of accuracy right now, although I'm going to come back to you guys in another episode or whatever it is to tell you how it is performing. So speaking of accuracy... Drew and I filmed an episode where we did, where we opened up, uh, I think it was like um, an Orient that I had or whatever it is to show you guys how to do the regulation with the screw. I don't know if Drew lost the episode or I don't know what's going on with it. I have zero idea. But w hopefully we're going to come back and do another episode. I'll let him open up one of his watches or something like that to show you guys how to regulate the screw. So I know he's a big proponent of that. With this particular watch, the Mito, uh, the other thing that's kind of cool about it, actually, I'm going to put you guys down for another quick second. So, paired on. Um, this one has, and I'm going to turn this camera back around so you guys can see this. This is kind of cool. Most dive watches have screwed at, uh, screw and case backs. Where this one has little, let me see if I can get it in better light, because again, these cameras just are like terrible. This one has little screws that screw in the case back. So it's kind of easier to open, which is a positive. And you guys see the uh, ocean star, like in the ocean on the back of that. So it's got one, two, three, four, it's got five screws, which you can um, which you can open and get it open. Now with this one, and I know Drew and I were having a little bit of a debate on this. Originally I thought, I thought he thought one way, but he really thinks another way. He likes to uh, be able to open up his watches and regulate them himself with a screw, which is understandable. Whereas this one, the Mito, um, you can't do that actually. It's regulated by like a laser with a computer, which is a lot, which is what a lot of the new Rolexes, especially after like the year 2000, whatever it is that they do. They don't have like a little screw where you can turn it to regulate it. So instead, if you don't have that option, or maybe you don't want to do that option, I pulled up something kind of cool for you. Found this online a while ago, and this is actually absolutely true. So if you want to do some simple regulating yourself, here's what you do. It says, number one, to gain a few seconds, lay the watch flat with the dial uppermost. So when you're going to sleep at night, you lay the watch just like this, flat straight up. That's to gain a few seconds. Let's say it's running a little slow. If you want to lose a few seconds, lay the watch vertically with the winding button downwards. So here's your winding button. That's called the crown. You're going to place it at night like so. Just laying it flat on its side just like that. Now let's say it's really gaining a little bit too much time during the day and you want to lose rather more seconds. Lay the watch vertically with the winding button uppermost. So you would place it just like that in a case, just kind of flat up like that. 
So I did want to show you guys uh, that little bit because I think it's actually very helpful. Um, you know, I what I did with this watch was, you know, I, I don't know the accuracy of it yet, but I laid it with the crown downwards. Um, I'm going to report back to you guys like in about another week or so. Uh, we have a friend's wedding this weekend. I'm going to wear it during that. Uh, I probably will not be wearing my Orient this weekend, although I always have it with me. Uh, I think, you know, my other favorite watch is that one, of course, but this one I really do like because it has the day and the date. It's the diver's watch. Um, one of the things that I want to bring up is, uh, is the conversation I was having with Drew um, about why I think that this to me is really like literally... I mean, the best watch for the money, whatever it is. Um, I, uh, I made a lot of great points to him. I just want to bring them up. I will not show you guys the whole conversation because that's whatever. It's terrible. Um, but these are a lot of points that I personally made and some even points that I learned from yesterday. So let me see if I can get this conversation up here. And... Uh, I'm going to show you guys this little bit. Oh, speaking of, I wanted to let you guys know while I'm finding this. So um, we are going to a uh, very special. Patek Philippe is having a, um, a really cool uh, exhibition in New York City at Cipriani at 42nd Street. Uh, it's going on from now till uh, July 23rd. So... Really cool. We're going to be in New York City uh, next Saturday, whatever it is. We're going to be checking that out. Um, I can't wait for it. Uh, you know, we'll be doing an episode from there, of course. I think it's going to be like one of the coolest like things that we've ever uh, we've ever seen or whatever. Um, so much history uh, with Patek Philippe and everything else like that. So I highly suggest that you guys check it out. Um, hopefully you guys are going to see some really cool watches like we are. I don't know if we're going to be able to film in there, but at least we'll film an episode from there. Um, so again, I'm just looking for the points that I, I, I made like, uh, let's see, uh, let's see if I can get ever find this thing here. Um, all right, so I don't really see this. So, so let's just do it. We, we could do this off the, uh. We could really do this off the top of our head. All right. So anyways, a um, little bit more of an unboxing with a review and going over some of the points that I really like about this. So let's let's just go back to the other room for a second so we can do this. Uh, so we'll take off the watch maybe just for a second just to point to everything and show you guys everything. So first thing that I love, of course, with the watch, it's the beautiful blue deep blue dial. Absolutely love it. You can never beat a watch with it. It's got the nice unidirectional rotating bezel. I showed you guys how that worked before. Do it for you guys again quickly. Rotates all the way around. You know, of course, when I have a second hand free, it's as seamless. I just want to make sure it's all lined up. Just one more click. There we go. It's just, just about as seamless as you get, but it's not too light to the point where you know it's going to move under any circumstances. That's really nice. Of course, it's got the great loom within the dial. You guys saw it before. Really nice orange-tipped uh, hand. Very easy to redial. It's got the day-date, but more importantly, it's got an 80-hour power reserve. Put it down on a Friday. It's more than running on a Monday. That gives you three and a third days of power reserve, meaning put it down and then pick it back up whenever. Who knows what the accuracy is going to do at that point, because when you leave it in one certain position, it goes off. But it's actually really, really cool. Hopefully you guys can see the watch, by the way. I'm hoping that you guys can. Um, so, of course, you have the screw-down crown with the crown protectors over here. It's another huge positive. 20 bar, 200 meters of water resistance. You got that really cool adjust adjustable clasp right here, of course. Um, you know, you got the screwed links that go into the bracelet. Nice brushed finish, which is really cool. Super comfortable on the wrist. Um, of course, you have the uh, screws for the case back. And it's not, you know, like a, a screwing case back versus screws, uh, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, really great stainless steel bracelet with the H links. Um, got a little bit of weight to it as well, which is nice. It's not like very light. 
And of course, you know, it's it's very durable, made of pretty high quality material, 316L stainless steel, sapphire crystal, stainless steel bezel. Um, again, my verdict on this watch is I happen to absolutely love it. I'm going to put this back onto my wrist now. I happen to really, really, really love this watch. Um, you know, again, you got to find watches that speak to you, that you love. Um, you know, in terms of features, in terms of looks, I don't care whatever it is. The other thing that's kind of cool about this watch is it's regulated by the laser, like I was mentioning before. Um, some people like that, some people don't. I happen to like it. I don't, you know, the more you open and close the case back on a watch, the more likely you are to get some dust or little particles in it, into it. And automatic watches are very sensitive to things like that. It could throw them off and it could really mess up some of the internal components or whatever it is. I'm not saying it's going to. Sometimes you just got to be careful whenever you open up the, uh, the watch. Make sure you especially don't touch it with your fingers. That gets oils into it. Uh, but my verdict on this watch is it's a keeper, you know. And actually one of the things that I was going to say was I know Drew knows that I go through watches like crazy day in, day night or whatever it is. So I, I was going to tell you guys, the viewers, that, hey, listen, if I sold this watch or did anything with it or even with the Orient, I will send all you guys, all 14 subscribers or whatever it is, 25 bucks a piece. I don't care, 30 bucks a piece. I'll pay for your dinner. Uh, I'm not planning on selling this watch or whatever it is. Um, I really like it. It's really comfortable. It's a great, great diver's piece. Again, more features than most divers in any sort of category like this. You know, again, came brand new with the uh, box, you know, everything was protected, links, uh, paperwork, user manual, warranty card, uh, nice pillow, tags, plastics even, which is really great. Um, and the watch itself is just absolutely fantastic. So I really can't complain. Um, like I said, we're going to be doing an uh, episode from uh, the... Tech Philippe Grand Exhibition watches. That's going to be next week. Really looking forward to that. Um, so much history with automatic watches. I uh, guess it turns out that I need that other thing. But yeah, this is um, this is what we're going to be going to. The Art of Watches Grand Exhibition. Discovering the world of Patek Philippe. Um, I just, I mean, I can't even wait for that. I think it's going to be so amazing, so special. When you get to really see the history of watches and see where watches came from, um, to see where they are now and see, I mean, some of them are worth massive amounts of money. Some of them, not as much, but still, as long as you have a nice watch or timepiece you want to call it, it's the most priceless feeling in the world. Um, you know, again, I've, gr I've graduated to all automatics because, you know, I make the joke to everyone. I'm sure I've said it to you guys before. If I had a quartz on my wrist and the battery went out and I couldn't tell the time, it would just drive me insane. I, I, it's just in my DNA, I guess. Um, so very cool with that. Um, again, you know, big shout out to, uh, to Mito, um, you know, for creating this watch. Uh, you know, of course they're part of the Swatch group. They get all the cool ETA uh, movements and they can modify them however they want. You could obviously easily uh, tell the time on this watch, really not a problem. We see that it's about to be uh, 1057, yep, 1057 right there, almost 11 o'clock on Friday. Uh, but again, you know, it's just such a, such a nice watch, um, so many great features on it. I mean, the list can almost go on and on. Most dive watches don't. They're meant to be a little more simple. This one I think is a little more complicated, which lends to its character. Uh, and Mito, of course, is the company for being a little bit um, innovative with it. I mean, they didn't invent, reinvent the wheel here, but they certainly took a lot of different elements from even other watches, and they decided to put it into a great package, which I wish more watch companies would do. You know, let's combine a lot of different things and put them under the hood. I know that's something Drew always says, there's no perfect watch out there. This is almost as close to, not, you know, I guess almost as close to perfect as you get. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. I guess you can't ever use the word perfect, but it's damn good. Anyways, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this. A little bit more extended version of It's About Time, of course, with me, Jared. Uh, hopefully the next time you guys see us, it will be with my partner in crime, Drew Pizzullo. We'll be at the uh, Art of Watches Grand Exhibition in New York City. It's going to be amazing. 
And guys, again, thank you. We, we've grown our subscriber list. Um, we've gotten some more comments. If you guys don't like the episodes, cool, not a problem. We get it. Tell us how we can improve. Um, email us, like, comment, do everything, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you, um, especially during the live Q&A. That was so successful. Um, you know, again, we love hearing from you guys. So, listen, thanks again for watching my episode. I know Drew will be uh, hopefully coming back with his unboxing. He is waiting for... I'll show you guys this. Um, all right, so let's get to uh, the Oris. Uh, stag horn. It's going to be a limited edition piece, and he is waiting for uh, this one right here. That should be coming in. I think it's coming from Germany or something. Uh, but he's waiting on that. Uh, he'll be doing his, hopefully, his unboxing. I'm sure he will after I do this one and send it to him. But, anyways, guys, again, thank you so much for watching. Uh, look forward to see you guys in the next episode. Peace out.